All right, problem 11.53. Collar A starts from rest and moves upward with a constant acceleration. Knowing that after 8 seconds the velocity of collar B with respect to collar A is 0.6 meters per second, determine the acceleration of A and B and the velocity and change in position of B after 6 seconds. So this is a pulley problem with the collar, so it's a bit more advanced than the other ones that we did before. And first thing I want to look at is how the system would operate. Okay, so we know that A is going moving upwards with a constant acceleration. So what does that mean? Well, if A goes upwards, what happens with this whole system? If A goes upwards, that means that this guy here moves upwards too, right? So this pulley here moves upwards, which means that now the rope goes like so. If the rope goes like so, that means that we have this extra bit of rope. Let me just highlight it here that can now go over here and let's say assist B or allow B to move and B would move downwards right because if it has more rope then it means that this pulley can come down because now it has this leeway over here okay, and obviously if we have the opposite um, condition if my A is going downwards downwards then that would require this pulley to go downwards which would require an additional bit of rope and for and that additional bit of rope comes from this part of the rope here so this guy has to go upwards so that there's more rope for a or for pulley on collar a to go downwards okay so if a is going upwards b is going downwards and vice versa all right cool so let's see what we have um what we're going to be needing to solve this problem firstly Collar A starts from rest, so that's the first information, and, and it's important, right? Because if it starts from rest, so if it's starting from rest, then that means that my V not A is zero, and because A and B are actually tied together in one single system, that means that my V not B is also zero. So they're both starting from rest, not just A. Okay, what else? Constant acceleration. If my acceleration is constant, so If my acceleration is constant, what does that mean? Well, it means that we know that acceleration is how the velocity is changing with time. So therefore, if the acceleration is constant, when I integrate this from time zero to any time that I want, and from V naught being V rest and any V uh, according to that time, then that means that the acceleration comes out of the derivative and we have t minus zero, which is just t, and over here we have v minus v naught, right? So that means that the acceleration of a equals uh, times the time equals the velocity of a, right? And because we can do exactly the same thing with b, then the acceleration of b times the time equals the velocity of b, right? And this is because obviously v naught is nil, as we just saw. Okay, so this gives us already a set of equations. I'm going to call them, just give them a number of one so that we can refer back to them. All right, what else? What else do we know? Um, Nick, let's keep reading. Knowing that after eight seconds, the velocity of color B with respect to A is 0.6 meters per second. So let's translate that into mass. So velocity of B in respect to A is 0.6 meters per second at t equals 8 seconds and we know that the velocity of b in regards to a is just how v is moving min minus the velocity of a okay so we know this equals 0.6 meters per second whenever my t is 8 seconds all right brilliant what else so that's that gives us two two equations already um, the other thing is that this rope does not stretch, right? So this rope has a constant length. And I don't know what that length is, but being a constant length assists us in solving it. Now, I could do a little baseline here and then draw my vectors coming out of that. That should be fine, no problem. But if you know, no matter what happens with the system, right, this little bit of rope here is going to stay there. So it doesn't matter whether A is all the way over here or all the way down here. That little bit of rope is going to be there. Right? That's just a, a, a thing that does not change in our system. 
And the same thing applies to this pulley here because this pulley is tied to this, I don't know, ceiling or wall, whatever that is. Okay, so I'm actually going to do a baseline a bit lower. And that's going it, to, it's not going to change if you do it on here on top. You just have to consider a couple more things, but just in terms of simplification. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a vector, and my vector will be y a. And y a is a vector that leaves from this baseline that I just drew and stops on the pulley. And likewise, I'm going to create a vector y b, which moves like so. Oh, come on, that's very. Okay, that's a bit straighter. Okay, and this will be my y b, and it stops on this pulley too. All right, and then what we'll do is because there's this is a single length, and so I don't know the the length of it. Let's say that if I sum up this part plus this part plus this part plus this part, I get 10 meters. So if that's 10 meters, it doesn't matter where these guys are. Like if the pulley is, the collar is over here, right? And I measure the, the, the size of the of, of all these this rope here, it's still going to be 10 meters. Okay, so I don't know what the total length is. All I know it's a constant. And I can sum that in regards to the vectors that I just created, right? Because I will have one of this vector here, so one uh, YA, two YA's, one YB, and then I have this extra bit here. Let me put it, put it in blue. I have this extra bit here, which is YB minus YA, right? Obviously, this is probably what you're thinking. So obviously, this part here is not part of the rope, right? But regardless, it's still a constant. So remember that I said, Let's pretend that this the whole length. So if I sum up all the red parts, that's going to be 10 meters. Well, if this distance here is 2 meters, right? It doesn't matter where this color is. This distance is still 2 meters. So the sum of all these guys here, the red plus the blue that I just drew, it's, it's going to be 12, which is also a constant, right? So what we're saying is if I sum up two of these YA's, one of these YB's, and uh, one of this these YB's minus YA's, Right, which is this distance here, that has to be a constant. In this case here, I said it will be um, could be 12. I don't know what the number, the actual number is, and it doesn't really matter. The point is that, so because uh, the rope doesn't stretch, and that's always going to be a, a, a constant when we're doing working with pulleys, um, y a plus YA again, right, plus YB, and then YB minus YA, right, plus YB minus YA equals a constant. Don't know what that is, but it's a constant. It can be 12, it can be 10, 13, doesn't matter. Okay, um, now note that we have YA minus YA. So this is simply put to YB plus YA equals a constant. And the reason why that is important is because that can gives us gives give us a relationship of the velocities and the accelerations because I can derive on both sides in respect to time. And you know that on the right hand side we're going to have zero because the derivative of a constant is zero. And on the the left hand side we're going to have the derivative of the position yb in respect to time. And that's velocity, right? Velocity in the y direction. So 2vb plus va has to be zero. And if I do that one more time, that is, derive in respect to time, and also just move this to the side, and again, derive in respect to time, then once again this happens, right? We have zero on the right-hand side, and on the left-hand side, the derivative of velocity in respect to time is acceleration. So the acceleration of AB plus AA has to be zero. And this is what I'm going to call equation number two, and this is what we're going to be using because know that this gives us a, a clear relation between a and b and because know that i'm calling uh, downwards positive right i'm telling i'm saying that y a is downwards like so and I'm doing that so therefore downwards is positive okay so that means that whatever is happening with a the opposite is going to be happening with c uh, with b sorry right so again looking at this equation if my a for instance is uh, 10 
right? Then my the acceleration of B is going to be negative 20, right? So remember that when we first look at this uh, setup, what would happen? Well, now we have an equation that actually shows that mathematically. But whatever happens with A, B is going to be doing the opposite. All right, cool. So now we can relate these all these things that were given in the uh, on the uh, statement so that we can find the acceleration of A and B. So we want to know the unknowns are actually these guys here, right? That's what we're trying to solve for. And we have three equations. We can relate that those guys there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and relate um, this equation A. I'm going to relate this equation A with this uh, boundary condition that we have here that we were given here. Okay, because note that I can where I have I have VA and VB. And what I can do is that where I have VB and VA, I can sub in for the accelerations. Okay, so in other words, when time equals 8 seconds, my VB, which is simply uh, acceleration of B times the time, minus the velocity A, which is acceleration of A times the time, it will, will be 0 0.6. Right? And when does this happen? Well, this happens when T is 8 seconds. <clears throat> so AB minus AA will be 0 0.6 divided by 8. Okay, and this is what I'm going to call equation number 3. Okay, but at this moment what we have is we have two equations and two unknowns for A and B, right? So we have equation 2 relating A and B and equation 3 A and B, so we can combine those guys to actually solve this. Right, so what can we do here? We can do, we can sub in where we have acceleration of a, and we can sub in that for um, minus two b. Right, so where we have acceleration of a, we can sub it for minus two b, or we can sub acceleration of a for. So we can rewrite this as, well, acceleration of a is just going to be 0 0.6 divided by eight minus acceleration of b. Right, and I can combine that into my equation too. My equation 2, we can write 2ab plus acceleration of a, which is just 0 0.6 divided by 8, oops, by 8, minus acceleration of b equals 0. Is that right? Mm, no, that's not right. I flipped it. It's negative a, so it's going to be the other way around. So, version of b minus 0 0.6 divided by 8. So this will be minus plus. Okay, so that means that my acceleration of b equals 0 0.6 divided by 8 times 3, and therefore a b is just 0 0.6 divided by 8 divided by 3, which is just 1 over 40 meters per second squared. Where did the units come from? Well, we had this guy, right? We had this guy as meters per second. So this guy was meters per second. And we divided the meters per second by 8, which was in seconds. So we had meters per second, and then we divided that by seconds, so that gives us meters per second squared. Cool. And now that we have... So this is one of the answers we were looking for, right? So this is one of the answers we were looking for. And the next step is, well, now that we have... Um, probably want to do that in green here. Now that we have that, well, acceleration of A is tri trivial, right? It's just going to be the 1 over 40 minus 0.6 divided by 8. Or, if you want to do the other one, which is probably easier, it's just going to be negative 2 times acceleration of A. Or, and it's going to obviously the same thing mathematically, right? It's just negative 2 times acceleration of A, which is 1 over 40, and this is 1 over 20. So that's the acceleration of A. Now, the good thing here is that because we know these guys are constant, no matter what time we're looking for, these uh, values will be the same, right? We know A and B are constant. And the other thing is that, like we said in the beginning, they have negative signs, they have opposite signs, I should say, and what we ended up with is 
um, precisely a negative a because remember that we considered where is it we considered the downwards direction to be positive and the whole problem states clearly in the beginning that this guy here is not going upwards it's actually going downwards oh, sorry <laughs> it's going upwards not downwards so we would expect the solution to be negative because we consider downwards positive so we're on track here okay the whole thing makes sense so far all right part b what else we need to find out part b velocity and change in position of b after six seconds all right, so we can do part B. It's going to be straightforward now. T at T equals 6 seconds. What is the velocity of B? And what is the position of B? Okay. Um, so let's start with the velocity. Because remember that we had a... Um, or is it equation 1 over here? We had this guy here. That precisely relates the velocity for any given time that we want. So that's very straightforward. Okay, so therefore velocity of B equals uh, 1 over 40, which is the solution of B times 6 seconds. So that's just 0.15 meters per second. So that's velocity of B. And the positioning of B, so YB. Remember that velocity is simply how position is changing with time, right? So therefore, my velocity um, times dt equals dy. So if I want to find what is y, I have to integrate here from y o to y, and that's going to give me how the position is changing, what's the position of b. And if I want to do that, I'm going to have to do that from v naught to v. But since we know that v is changing, right, we know that v is always changing, what we can do is we can actually sub where we have v, we can sub for this, right, and simplify our integral. So this becomes, let me rewrite, where we had v, I'm going to rewrite a b. So this is v b, right, obviously. a b t d t. And on the right hand side we have the same thing. And over here, now I'm integrating instead of v0 from, from 0 to t. So that's 0 is where the v0 would be. Oh, my apologies. This has always been from 0 to t because we're integrating respect to time. But we know that v changes with time. So that will be integration that we need to take into account. Now that we sub in vb for uh, this, it makes it easier, right? Because we know acceleration does not change with time, so it can uh, come out of the, the integral as a constant. And this is simply a b times t squared over 2 t being uh, 6 right so in this case we're going from 0 to 6 and on the right hand side we have y minus y naught which gives us uh, the difference in positioning okay so simply put the diff the positioning of b that we're looking for delta y or b that we're looking for is just the acceleration of b times t squared over 2, and we have all the values for that, so I should probably go ahead and put that, 1 over 40, times the time that we're looking for, which is 6 squared, divided by 2. Okay, so the positioning of b is 0 0.45 meters. And we can check that is indeed the units, because where we have the, where do we have the things that we're putting, yeah, okay. So we're multiplying over here. What we're doing is we're multiplying 1 over 40 meters per second squared by seconds, and we're squaring those seconds, right? Six seconds. So you all go away. We're left with meters. Okay, so the position of B after um, six seconds is 0.45 meters, and that will be 0.45 meters uh, downwards, right? Because we know it's going downwards as A is going upwards. So whatever the position is, the original position, is going to be 0.45 meters um, downwards in respect to its original position. And its velocity will be, after 6 seconds, its velocity is going to, where is it? It's going to be 0.15 meters per second. Cool.